Hello everyone, welcome back to Alicia's in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to be making a uh, honey whole wheat sourdough bread for you. So let's get started. Here in my bowl I have uh, 120 grams of whole wheat flour, 360 grams of bread flour, and 9 grams of sea salt, which I use uh, Himalayan pink sea salt. And in here, I have, um, and in here, I have 150 grams of starter that I added to uh, 270 grams of warm milk and 30 grams of warm water, as well as 40 grams of honey. Um, and those I actually warmed up first and got them up to like baby bottle temperature. Um, and then I added my starter into that and then um, 30 grams of oil, which I'm just using a canola oil. So I'm going to pour these into my dry ingredients here, which I didn't mix my dry ingredients. Let me mix that real quick so that we don't get all the salt in one area. So in goes our wet ingredients. And this is going to make a, um, you know, light, soft, what I'm going to call a sandwich style loaf. Um, we'll be making this in a loaf pan instead of in a bowl or something like that. Excuse me, instead of in a banneton, making it into a bowl. It kind of smells like honey cereal right now with the whole wheat and the honey and the milk. So I'm going to keep mixing these together until... I get all the um, dry ingredients incorporated in. We don't want any dry flour being left behind. Now I'm just going to give this a little bit of a hand mix just to kind of get everything incorporated. And I'm going to use my dough scraper to do that. Because, again, that's my preferred way. If you've watched any of my other sourdough videos, then you know that's my preferred way to kind of get everything to come together. Um, and I'm just spinning and folding. And now you can see that's basically come together. It's a little bit shaggy, but if I take it with my hand, ooh, it was still a little wet under there. We'll give it one more turn with my hand, which I don't like to do because it's messier that way. All right, that's better. Now I'm going to scrape all the dough off of my hand. I'm gonna cover this with a wet towel and let it rest for about an hour, and I'll bring you guys back at that point. All right guys, our dough has rested for about an hour now, and now we're just going to tighten this up to kind of bring the dough together. And what we're looking for here is for this to become soft and supple um, and to come together into more of a smooth dough. So I'm just going to pull this up. They say this only takes about 15 or 20 seconds. I usually find that I have to do it closer to 45 seconds or 
a minute to get it to kind of get tight. But you see how as I pull, it's starting to be a tight circle in the middle instead of being all spread out. Um, that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to give it a pinch in on itself, which isn't necessary, but that is just kind of what I tend to do. And now I'm going to cover this again with my wet napkin. I like to set this in my microwave with the stove light on, the, the light that shines down on the range. Um, that gets the temperature better for the bulk rise because I keep kind of a cold house. It's about 65 in here today. So I'm going to let this rest, or I should say I'm going to let this rise for about uh, six hours. I'll start checking on it in six hours to see where it's at. And then when it's ready, we will get it shaped and into the pan where it will rise one more time and then it'll be time to bake it. So I'll bring you guys back after this has done its bulk rise. All right, friends, my dough has rested for six hours now, and so I'm going to shape it to get it into my loaf pan here. And I've got this out because I'm going to use it to give me a guide as to how, how wide I want my loaf to be. I hope that makes sense. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just put down a little bit of flour because this can be sticky and it's just better to have a little flour down. Now I'm going to grab my dough scraper and just scrape this fella on out of the bowl. You can see, let's see, let me bring him in closer. See the stringiness there? That's how you know you've got good gluten formation. So I'm just going to pull them out. Don't want to waste any of it, you know. And now I'm going to set them down and kind of press the air out of them. I need just a little bit of flour on my fingers. So I'm just kind of pressing this like maybe down into a, we'll call that a 12 by 8 rectangle. Let's see. Uh, 12 by 8, roughly. And now I'm going to take him and roll him up. I'm going to turn him this way. And see, uh, let's see, how can I show you this? Okay, I'll set him back that way for a minute. See how he's slightly not as wide as my pan is. Um, that means when he rises, he's going to have time to or space to rise in the pan. And that's about the distance that I want him to be. Now back to turning him around. So what I am going to do here is just kind of pull it tight and roll it into a log. See how I stretch and roll? But my flour is helping to keep it all from sticking. And then I'm going to come tuck my edges in. I kind of like the tuck and flip. I know some people don't like to do it that way. But that is how I like to do it. Now, I'm going to let him sit here to rest. Um, we'll roll him so that he's pretty side down, or seam side down, pretty side up. I'm going to let it sit here and rest for about uh, five to ten minutes 
while I go grease my pan and then we will put him in there for his final rise. All right guys, it's been almost two hours now and our bread has risen in the pan. Um, we've got our oven set to 375 and I'm gonna get this bread into the oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. And you, you can see that the loaf has risen up past the pan. All right, friends, our, uh, all right, friends, our sourdough honey wheat bread is ready. So let's pull it out of the oven. And there we have it. Now, while this is still hot, you want to rub some uh, butter on the top. So we'll be right back. So I'm just going to take a nub of butter and just rub it on. I don't melt the butter beforehand. And now I'm going to let that cool. Let me back you guys up a little bit so you can see that a little better. Now, that's a little better. I want to show you also what happened um, because I let the dough get a little dry we formed an ear on this side and that's where it will crack out because I let the top dry out a little too much before putting it in the oven so I will bring you guys back when we cut this open All right, friends, I know you can see the uh, steam coming off. I just went ahead and cut it open fresh because I was torturing my husband and child by not cutting it open. But you can see our beautiful crumb. And like I said before, we had the blowout on the side because I let the top of the dough get a little too dry. I waited a little too long to put it in the oven. Um, so I hope you guys will give this a try. I think you will really like it if you do. And I will see you again soon, guys. Bye.